So guys, today we are here with a high-end build for those of you that are prepared to go partially used. If you're ready to do that, it's possible to get performance dramatically better for a much better price than what we can usually do while going new. This guide on how to do a high-end PC on around the 1500 euros mark is gonna beat every single guide out there on YouTube which uses only new components. So let's get straight into it. Now the core of this build is gonna be the motherboard, CPU, RAM and SSD combo. So what we've gotten today is an used i9 12900KF which I managed to buy for just 270 euros. You can actually get that for even slightly cheaper. These things are getting sold very quickly because people are upgrading to 13th gen and so they are offloading them. Then I went on Amazon second hand and I bought this Prime Z690P Wi-Fi motherboard and I paid just 150 bucks for it. At this point, the used combo is just, again, slightly used motherboard on Amazon second hand. They basically send it back and they are never used. So they are basically new. And then the CPU, which was used lightly for upgrades. Then I paired that with full Viper, brand new RAM and SSD. Now they send these in and it's their Viper gaming series from Patriot. Now this brand is a little bit less popular in Europe, but they are actually come in with great value. So this kit I have right here, you can buy it on Amazon for 130 bucks and it is at 6,000 megabytes per second speed. Whereas this is a two terabyte Gen 4 NVMe, which goes all the way up to 7,400 megabytes per second in write and can be had for under 150 bucks. I think two terabytes of NVMe is needed uh, for a today high-end build. Then still going used, I got what I think is the best graphic card to buy used right now. That and the RTX 3080 Ti are the best. I'm talking about the RTX 3090. I got a Founders Edition for 575 euros and it is actually pretty much brand new. Now you probably will not be able to find a deal this good, uh, but in this case, the guy bought a few and this one was the second card in an SLI, was basically never used. So it's basically brand new and I managed to get it for really cheap. Now, I also bought used the power supply because again, it is from a guy I know who wanted to do a mod, so he bought the PSU and sleeved cables, but then did not end up going through with the build, so I got them pretty much brand new, custom set, Corsair RM1000, 1000 watt 80 plus gold, with custom sleeved cable, red, directly from Corsair and I paid 60 bucks for the combo. And now why did they get them red? Well, because they were what he had, but also because I got this height Y40 in red. Now I love aquarium case. Matter of fact, I have a height Y60 in my personal build, which I guess sells something, right? And this is their newer case, which supports even larger graphic cards like the RTX 4090, still with a very unique vertical mount. And it is just full of expandability and with premium quality that height brings. So we got this one. And to cool the CPU, cool everything off, I got this MSI 240mm all-in-one cooler with a programmable screen, which I think will really suit the build once we get everything synchronized in red with this silence fan I got as well. So all in all, the budget comes in at right around the 1500 euros standpoint, but then again, I really wanted to get components that were pretty much new and I got a ton of fully new parts, so you can build this for cheaper if you are prepared to get something a bit more used, a bit more worn, but we wanted to get something pretty much as close as new as possible. And once built, it really wouldn't be possible to tell it apart from a new PC. So with that said, I say we get installing and see how everything comes out. Let's see how this Viper Gaming RAM looks. We have a huge sticker and I do think it looks really nice, I have to say. Hold up guys, let, let me carpet charge one. Yes, now we're ready. Ooh. 
So yeah, it's something pretty interesting. It's a Viper, basically. They give it to you, the, the SSD with the heatsink, but they give it to you fully detached, so you can install it for yourself. Or in case you have a motherboard like mine with an integrated heatsink, you can just go ahead and use the motherboard heatsink. So I think it's really cool and we will just use the motherboard heatsink this time, but it looks just super nice and it's something very thoughtful of them. Okay, so let's get rid of this heat shield. Now for the paste, we're using some Arctic MX6, which I deem to be the best out there. And we're doing a simple line to keep things simple and to accommodate for the geometric of the actual CPU. Let's actually plug the cooler on top of it, right there, and then we can secure it. Guys, it's just insane that height products are finished, even on the inside. Just look at all the details, like I've never seen this on any other brand really. You, we have details here, details at the top of the case, even on the back of the case, it's just completely insane. So they have removed the 3.5 inch bay that was on the Y60, which I used for my personal build. And it comes with a pre-installed fan on the bottom and pre-installed fan here as outtake on the back and here we have a traditional and very characteristic extension that heights uh, gives you with the case so it's actually pretty good value for money if we include this all the fan all the design um, honestly not too expensive at all we can now finally slot in everything paying very much attention to the cables right there and then the actual cooler over here. Now it's time to screw them in. Motherboard in, it's time to put the extension in. We have to slot it one slot down because this is where we have um, our PCI Express slot. And now we can just go ahead and plug it. Here is our massive unit, just heavy guys. And it has like 1000 watts just on the 12 volt line. Impressive. Now we don't need these this time because we're going full custom. So everything we want, we have in red. Let's grab our basically brand new RTX 3090. Just tell me. This doesn't look mint. And now get rid of this and of this. We can mount it in the case. Now guys, do you think it fits the build? I think it does. Well guys, with the build finally finished, it's time to do some peel-off. Well, here we are with the PC fully built and fully tested, and I think it came out better than I was expecting. So I say we do a wrap up of all the components and my experience with them, and then we go over the performance. Starting from the case, what you see the most and probably the center of the build. Now, this has definitely been a, quite a big change for height because it's a more traditional case. So the power supply is on the bottom. It's no longer uh, side mounted like it was on the Y60 you see in the back. They managed to basically innovate the case, make it actually more spacious, even though the case is smaller, uh, while keeping, I think, the uniqueness of the height case. So yes, it is still a height. It didn't radically change. And I am honestly very happy with it. You still have uh, a couple quirks that height makes that other brands don't. Again, it's a premium case, kind of expensive, but I think the aesthetic uh, that comes with it justifies it. And I think even in the red version, which is definitely a bit more subjective, I think it still looks kind of nice, especially once we synced up uh, the whole build red and we put on the MSI display image 
uh, and dra Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh to make everything fit well together. I think it came out looking stunning. And I also like a lot uh, the RGB on the RAM, on the Viper RAM. Speaking of which, great experience with it. I just had to go into the BIOS, enable the XMP, and the XMP worked flawlessly. Same thing with the NVMe drive. It actually performs slightly better uh, than what I was expecting. I ran a crystal disk mark and it was running great. Speaking of benchmarks, let's go over the whole list of specs, the CPU. CPU Z score, great. Again, this i9 is probably the best value play on the high end, so I was pretty happy with it. RAM complements the performance with the 6,000 megahertz XMP running well. The 240 millimeters, only one cooler from MSI, is not only pretty, it performs great and it manages to keep the i9 under wraps. Again, I do recommend to undervolt your i9, I have a full guide on how to do it. Speaking of undervolting, you should also undervolt your GPU, the RTX 3090, and obviously, yes, I do have a tutorial for that one too. Uh, I have a dedicated playlist for CPU undervolting and another one for GPU undervolting, go check them out. But getting an used RTX 3090 Founders Edition was probably the best play I made in this build because it wasn't definitely wouldn't have been possible to get this kind of value for money price performance without getting the GPU so cheap and now this I got extremely lucky the GPU was basically new it was used just a few hours and we can see that by testing thermals in heaven benchmark because it quite simply doesn't run hot at all and fan is pretty much fanless quite often honestly now it's running but we are after a pretty long gaming session. Speaking of which, usually when I test these PCs, I just play for a while, but this time I was actually having quite a bit of fun playing at 4040p, 144 hertz with everything maxed out in Apex and the FPS never dropped below 144. And I actually managed to arrive second place, did quite a bit of frags. I was genuinely having fun, but I also tested Warzone, Genshin, my usual suite, and everything is running maxed out and 1440p. This is what the build is aimed towards, that and productivity. You can just do high level render on this build with no issues at all because the GPU has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Speaking of which, this will also be enough to play the latest high VRAM demanding game like Diablo 4 maxed out and few extra ones that really draw a ton of VRAM. Cyberpunk that's used quite a bit, Hogwarts Legacy and in general all the newest launches this PC can play easily so I'm really happy about it. A few extra synthetics, well we run Prime 95, CPU runs pretty hot but it's by design, again undervolted. We run Fire Strike, we got close to 40k <laughs> combined with close to 50k in graphics massive physics score just goes to show how balanced the pc is for real world use so for the performance this is everything a little comment on day in the life ease of use i think generally looks stunning can i say it even though i built it i think it's one of the best looking pcs i've built lately so i'm really happy about it i think the extension uh, on the power supply really complements it and i overall wouldn't change a single thing sometimes i finish pcs i'm like ah Maybe I could have done this differently, but this time I'm really happy. And you can build a similar one as well for cheap. Again, just gotta buy smartly. So do let me know. Do you like how it came out? Would you change anything? I challenge you to change anything this time. I'm really happy about it. And see you in the next one. Many more builds coming. Bye.